Let's talk about how you design groups of plate elements or meshes or more commonly called slabs in visual analysis. My model consists of an area that I've drawn that's 20 feet by 20 feet square. I've selected the four boundaries and set their support condition to pin. And for the area, I've said I want to generate plates. I'm going to set my plate thickness to 12 inches, the material to 4 KSI concrete, and my element size is roughly one square foot, which produces a fairly consistent mesh, as you see. In terms of loading, my dead load consists of self-weight only. My live load consists of 150 pounds per square foot uniform pressure over the area, which is applied to the plates. Another thing to note about my design is that if we look at the design checks with nothing selected in the project manager, I have the auto mesh plates option checked to yes. What that means is as I generate or draw plates in my model, if they adjoin other plates, they will be attempted to be grouped or meshed together into one single design unit. In order for that to happen, the plates all must lie in the same plane and touch each other and have the same thickness. The other thing to note about this project is that my vertical axis is in the Z direction or pointing in and out of the page as we're looking at it. When I go to the design view, I see that I don't have any design information currently shown graphically. If I select one of the plates, the entire mesh of plates gets selected and we see that a design mesh has been created with the name Design Mesh 1. So that was all done automatically behind the scenes. Why don't we have any results? A common thing to do in a design view is to turn on the flyby tips by going to the design filter and select flyby information. And now if I hover my mouse over one of the plates, I see it says errors. Wall slab design requires strength level demands. Let's go back to the model view load case manager and look at the load combinations. When I created this model, by default, ASCE 705 ASD load case combinations were created. Well, to do concrete design, I need strength level cases. So I'm going to unselect that and select ASCE 710 LRFD. So now I will get strength level cases. So let's do that. And now that I do that, when I go to the design view, I see all of my design plates now have failed. When I take a look at it, I'm seeing that I have a unity value of 1.3 for everything. Now it could be wrong. Well, let's go ahead and select one of the plates again and look over in the inspector and look at the parameters that are set up for this design mesh. I'm going to use ACI for minimum steel ratio. We're going to use slab maximum spacing limits. No metric bars. We're going to use 60 grade steel. The direction of my X bars. Well, what's this all about? For a mesh, reinforcing will be sized in two orthogonal directions, the X and the Y direction. Currently, the X direction is the global X direction. I could change that to the global Y or a custom direction. To see the direction on the mesh, we can go to the design filter and click on mesh local axes. When I do that, I see every plate has a local XY coordinate system with the X axis in red and the Y axis in green. I'll turn those back off. Going back to the parameters for this design mesh, I can see that I'm using a single mat by default. These plates are 12 inches thick. It makes sense to use dual mats. So I'm going to switch to a double mat of steel. And when I do that, I have covers to specify for both the top and the bottom. I'm going to set the top cover to one inch and the bottom cover to one inch. So now I have one inch covers. And now what's happened? Well, now I'm starting to get somewhere. I'm actually getting plates that have unity check values that fall in the color spectrum down below, where light blue means we're roughly a third of the way through. Red means it's failed. So we have some issues with, with our plates in the center of this mesh. If I hold my mouse over one of these plates, we see we have a unity value of 1.08. Well, what rebar are we using? If I select the mesh, when we look at our reinforcing, we see that for the top mat, we have number four is a 12 
x, number 4 is a 12y, and the x bars are the top. For the bottom reinforcement, we're saying we have number 4 is a 12 both ways as well. So can we change our reinforcing? One way to do it would be to change it directly in, this, in the properties page. Another way to do it would be to select our mesh, go to the design ribbon tab, and select design the mesh. When I do that, I can see that my Y bars top and bottom are okay, but those bottom bars, because we have primarily positive bending and bottom is in tension, they're, they're not enough. We can have it choose bars for us by selecting the optimize for one particular set of bars. I'm selecting it for all four, top XY, bottom XY, and then I can pick the range of rebars I want to choose from. Let's go ahead and choose from rebar in the range of number fives to number sixes with a minimum spacing of three inches, a maximum spacing of 18 inches, and an increment of one inch as we're trying it. So once I do that and select optimize for top steel, I can see I can get by with number five at 18 for both the top X and Y bars. For the bottom bars, I can use number fives at 16 in the X direction, and number five is at 17 in the Y direction. I'll go ahead and select that, but I'm really not totally happy with those 17 inch bars. So I'm gonna fix that by selecting the mesh again and changing the Y spacing and make it 16 inches to match the X spacing. So now I have a design mesh where all unity checks are met and my bars that are finally used are the ones shown here.